Specific yield and specific retention are two related terms that are also related to porosity, the topic I covered in my last video on hydrogeology. And let's start thinking about them like this. Let's say we have a sample. I'll represent it just as this little box here, this little square, and it's fully saturated. I'll touch on this later, but it is important that it is saturated, meaning that all of the pore space in it is filled. So to represent that, I'll just draw this little water line and pretend that goes all the way up. It's filling all the pore space, right? And we'll say, you know, this isn't in an in situ environment necessarily. It's pretty abstract. Just imagine it as kind of floating in space somewhere. Over time, what's going to happen to this sample, since gravity is acting on it, over time, what we're going to see happen if we draw it again is that some of that water's going to drain out. Okay, easy enough. Let's just say it pools down here. And uh, maybe we got some droplets coming down. Maybe it hasn't fully uh, lost all its water content yet. Okay, well, that's easy enough. That's just making sure we understand that gravity is a thing. Okay, gravity acts on soil samples and rock samples and draws water out of them. What's the big deal? Well, this is where we first get into specific yield and retention. And the two are very much related, as I said. Specific yield is going to be the volume of this water that's drained out. And the word specific should cue you in. That is per unit volume of the sample. And retention is going to be the volume of water that is retained, the remainder in here, divided by the volume of the sample. So there are no real uh, variable or symbols that I've seen really used for specific yield and retention, probably because these aren't two widely used parameters. Usually in the field, we're going to be using porosity, but I figure it's good to know where these come from. Yield and retention is going to be, we can call this volume, let's say V sub W for water divided by V sub S sample, and I'll call that V sub water comma D for drained, and then this we'll say retained divided by the volume of the sample. So very similar, we're just looking at the volume drained for yield, and think of that as the water that the sample is able to yield that we are able to get from it, versus, well, retention, the water that's retained in the sample. Easy peasy. So why would water be retained in the first place, right? Why wouldn't water just flow through this you know, like it would a pipe. Sure, it's got grains in it, but wouldn't it just slide past those? Well, this is where we get into a little bit of the theory behind it, and this is important for all hydrogeology, which is that there's surface tension, right? If we were to draw, let's say, four little grains here of whatever size, and then we draw a little, let's say these dashed lines represent little droplets of water that have kind of, that are adhering to these particles. And you've got gravity acting on each of these water droplets. I'll mention also, this is just fun fact and kind of a little bit of vocabulary here. The water that's retained, that's held here is called pendular water. Pendular water, good, good term to know. And it's held up there by the surface tension, the surface tension between the water and the grain. So you can think of it as, okay, it's like simple physics, right? We have a force balance. In order for this water, you know, obviously to begin with, it's going to be dripping out. We're going to be getting the water that goes towards our specific yield because it's draining. But eventually we're going to have so little water that it's so close in on these surfaces here. It's going to be such a thin film that there's going to be so much surface tension, right? Or there's going to be very little amount of that water that isn't getting a lot of surface tension here, like there would be if there were a bigger, let's say, yeah, let's make this, you know, over time it goes from this to this. Why was this water down here, you know, why was it able to drip off? Well, because out here, there's, there's not a lot of surface tension, right? It's not touching, it's not even close to the surface of that grain, right? Meanwhile, over here, We'll say that since it's a much thinner film of water, you're going to get a lot more surface tension all across it. So that's what allows it to stay up. So we've got surface tension kind of pulling that water up and gravity pulling it down, and those cancel each other out.
allowing us to have retained water. And it does not matter how long you let this drain, how long you let it sit for. Time could go on infinitely long and this water will stay there. So to make that crystal clear, what we have is surface tension, which is pulling it up, balancing gravity. Now as a final note here, I'll say that I mentioned at the beginning that porosity was related to these two terms. And the relation we have for that is N, you'll remember that's porosity, is equal to the sum of the specific yield and the specific retention. And this is where, like I mentioned, it's important for this sample to be saturated. The sample isn't saturated, it means nothing, right? You know, you could have it half of the pore space filled and then you're gonna get a different specific yield than if it were all of the pore space filled. So really it has to be saturated for these two terms to make sense in order for this relationship to be true. Because if they're fully saturated, think about it. You take the volume of water, assuming that water can get to all the pore spaces, I should say. Put a little asterisk by that equation. Because of course sometimes water can't get to, so it may be impossible to fully saturate the sample. But if you've got something like a sandstone, a simple soil sample, things like that, where it's going to pretty much always be able to easily be completely saturated in a laboratory setting, then the amount of water, the volume that has left it, plus the volume of water that's still in it, well, that gives you the total volume that is not occupied by the sample itself, right? Physical grains which if you'll recall, that's exactly what porosity is, the volume of pore space divided by the volume of the sample. If you're curious for testing things like specific yield and retention, usually what we'll do is we'll have a vertical column of some rock or soil sample. We'll flood it from the bottom and that water level will gradually rise up. We usually do it from the bottom so that air can't get compressed and stuck in it and have little air pockets within the sample. So we flood it from the bottom leave it like that till it's saturated and then drain it out and we see how much leaves the tube sample and how much stays in it. Oh, and this is an important final note to make. Because grains, if you have more smaller grains, you're going to have a larger surface area of grains within that sample. Smaller grain size leads to a higher specific retention and a lower yield. So smaller grain just make that a note. That's going to raise your retention and drop your yield. So things like clays and silts are going to have higher retentions and lower yields than things like sands and gravels. So that's a little bit of a topic that you might not see too frequently in practice. But it's good to know these concepts and especially their relationship with porosity because it can be a method of measuring porosity indirectly in a laboratory setting.